Hey, what's up, Barbecue family? It's your boy Joe Mill here, back again with Killer Miller Q. And today, we're firing up the old Lone Star Grill. We're gonna be doing a brisket style beef rib. That's the big boy, the big style dino rib. We're gonna have us a little bit of fun. Hold tight, I'm gonna get you right to the pit. So here we go, here go the product. We got a beautiful, hopefully you don't get too much of my shadow on here, a beautiful looking uh, beef uh, plate rib here. Uh, pretty much, and I'm gonna check out, look at this, look at this marbling we got right here. This is something I'm looking for. When I'm picking out these things, I like to try to make sure that they are nice and even on both sides, because sometimes you can get one side is way lower. Make sure the fat on there isn't too uneven or way too thick on one side or another. And then like always, first and foremost, I'm trying to check out some of that marbling, which you can see looks beautiful on this one here. Um, not a whole lot to do to these things. They always got a nice thick, and I see a nice little gouge here. Uh, which isn't a big deal. Um, some people might like to score this. Some people take it off. I actually leave it on when I'm doing beef ribs just because uh, by the end of this thing, they get a little flimsy. This is going to be the last protector to kind of hold on to a little something. You can always get it off later. If you score it, it'll pretty much break down to a little bit of nothing, but uh, I'm going to leave it pretty much intact minus that gouge. I got this from my local butcher. Big shout out to Allison over there at... Uh, well, let me make sure I make sure I get it right uh, before I actually throw out that name. But uh, my local butcher, my girl Allison, hooked me up. Um, one thing that I am going to do is I do want to take down this layer of fat that I got here. And then I also, you see, it's a little bit of this silver skin. Hence why you can see why it's called silver skin. It almost looks like a uh, fish skin or something like that. I'm going to try to bring that down so I can almost get down to meat level. That's going to help me get a nice bark throughout. Today we're going to be making this thing real simple. I'm going on the rack the whole time. So I do want to give me a great looking bark. Get this thing nice and dark. So first and foremost, I got my uh, boning knife here. I'm about to dig into this, try to take off this thin stuff. And uh, I'll bring you back let's see what that looks like before we actually get it seasoned up. Alright, so we got it cleaned up. As you can see, I uh, exposed some of that back. You still see some of those little pieces of silver skin in there a little bit. Uh, you can see a little bit on this ridge right here. You got to be careful though. If you chase this thing too much, man, we'll pull this thing apart. I'll break it all the way down to the bone. You see how much thinner it got here on this side as I kind of broke down this fat layer that was sitting here. But in general, everything that I took off, as you can see, just take your time with it. Don't rush. Uh, it's all fat. This is all stuff that I didn't necessarily want. Like I said, now I can easily, and maybe I will, just for some fun today. Normally, I would go ahead and use some tallow. But uh, since we got it right here, let's go ahead and we're going to break this down. Just like we do with some tallow. So we're going to be using this later on to kind of oint this thing. So I got this already set up now. It's already cleaned up. We're going to get into the rub that I'm going to be using. Uh, as you can see, I'm just using one of my old cans that I already have. This is my Aaron Franklin-ish rub and i'm gonna say is just because for a fact we don't know but uh following um the meat scientists uh, uh that uh, many of you probably already know and he kind of went through that story with john lewis and uh him sliding off and doing his own thing and kind of the real recipe that he used i've used this before it's an amazing uh rub on a brisket the last time that we did some beef rub or uh, beef ribs we used the uh, meat church's holy cow rub which i actually like a lot on beef but uh, i think this one also will go great basically if you can't see it here with this glare i might have from the sun it's pretty nice out here you got eight parts of pepper three parts of lawry three parts of kosher salt, and then one part of garlic pepper, or garlic powder, I'll repeat that. Eight parts of garlic pepper, three parts of law seasoning salt, three parts of kosher salt, and then one part of garlic powder. And with garlic powder, I like to use granulated garlic. It's a little bit thicker as far as the uh, granule. Um, basically, you're gonna be mixing all that up. If you don't know, a part is any equal measure. I can use a cup and make that a part. I, which would be a lot of rub if you did that. I could use a half a cup. I could use a tablespoon. Whatever you want. It's an equal part. And then just follow that recipe as follows. Regardless, this is a pretty damn good rub right here that we're going to be throwing over here on this uh, beef plate rib. Like I told you before, I did not get rid of the membrane. We're leaving that. We're going to turn around and make us a little bit of tallow-ish, shall we call this. This is not necessarily brisket. But uh, we're going to get us some grease to be able to relather this thing with its own natural juices. I'm going no binder. We're going no wrap. 
we're gonna keep this thing nice and natural let me season up all sides i'll show you what that's gonna look like and there it is done too crazy nice and pretty so keep in mind thick cut of meat it can handle a lot of rub now that rub that we just went over not only does it have kosher salt in it hopefully you can get a good view um not only does it got kosher called salt in there but you also got seasoning salt so don't want to make this thing too uh salty if you're going to be using this rub obviously you can do this beef rib with anything you want i thought about just going straight ap just some heavy on the pepper some salt and a little bit of garlic and just going like that regardless you ain't gonna come out wrong as long as we cook this thing right so one way or another i didn't want to over salt it definitely made sure i got me a nice crust on here so we can get to a nice bark and then just rub it around let it get everything up off your board i'm gonna let this hang out for just a second um this rub is not gonna sit on here this long because i'm ready to go my long star is damn near up to temp but uh i am a little bit hot so i'm gonna let it chill out and then we're gonna slide this on all right as you can see we on deck now we got us up to about 250 i just had this baby open we got them beef ribs on sitting pretty keep in mind just like a regular rib form those babies up a little bit make sure that they sit the way you want them to this tallow won't take too long but uh we're gonna go ahead and get this out the way because i do need to cook me a little something for the week so i'm gonna get that over there towards the hot spot uh plan for the day i'm rolling along at roughly about 250 we got pecan wood smoking we're gonna be rolling this thing the whole time with the uh top off meaning we're not gonna be wrapping is the goal since i got started nice and early i'm going with the thicker side more or less the uh bone side more towards the meat uh this thing is going to change dramatically as this thing starts pulling back towards the bone and we'll start getting them exposed and i'm um, along the way when i do come in here change i give them a 180 rotation i'll let you see later on all right so we a couple hours in just tossing a log in always keep one off to the side just added another one that way they can get nice and preheated so pretty much as soon as that log will hit it'll go ahead and uh catch up for you quick fast just a little quick fire management for you i'm gonna leave the door open as we kind of get into this check-in uh we've been rolling along pretty much at about 250 here with the old long star Ooh, we cooking up nice all right so i got my little grease out of here i know i'm not gonna get every bit of that so that's probably gonna be good i'll yank that out of there and kind of strain that and uh, you can see we got that pullback going. This is looking nice and pretty already. After just a couple hours, I'm gonna give it a full 180 rotation. And uh, I'm not gonna spritz or anything. I'm gonna let this bark keep on developing, looking good. And we're gonna go from there. All right, just getting a little bit of wood in this thing. Four hours in, hello beautiful. I brought my spritz out here, but uh, this thing looking pretty good. I will hit in a couple areas back here. I can see my bark is starting to form nicely we're gonna get this thing uh, another turn i know last time i said 180 i didn't do a 180 usually the back end of my smoker is where most of my heat is at so i put the bigger end back there now what i'm gonna do is uh, i'm gonna rotate that bigger end more towards the fire and put that bone side back out this way and uh, we're gonna keep this thing rolling i'll give it a light spritz we'll give it a rotation and uh, i got a small addition all right, so we got that thing spritzed. Uh, as far as my spritz, I'm using uh, nothing crazy, just a little bit of apple cider vinegar cut 50-50 with a little bit of water. That is more or less spritzed around this outside where we're getting a little bit of dry up, a little bit in the front. We got a nice little wet spot on top, so I ain't really want to touch that too much. It's just kind of starting to self-base itself. You can see part of the reason why I said leave those membranes on. As you see these bones start to twist up and everything in here, this baby is cooking. So this baby, we'll see how long it holds on there. It'll probably reject this soon enough as this thing continues to draw up. But it's looking real good. I'm getting a nice little bark. And uh, the little flavor on my spatulas I gave it a turn don't taste too bad neither. I'm not even too worried about temp at this point because I know I got quite a ways to go. I'll check it out here in a little bit. This was a uh, 6.34 pound um, uh, beef rib. So I'm expecting it's probably going to be around a six, uh, six hour cook. Uh, like I said, when I come back in here because I am about to throw this... Uh, chicken i got going for my whole my whole chicken for the week nothing too crazy a little side something that you'll get to kind of check out a little bit of here on this cook i'm gonna throw it over here a little closer towards the firebox it'll be a little bit hotter over this way probably have me more towards 300 325 as my flame is kicking up a little bit in here but uh, i'm gonna let that cook and then i'll come back in about an hour and then i'll take a try and just see where we at on temp i want to take this baby up to around 200 203 one way or another is really going to be about it being nice and probe tender
A team, I want to jump in here real quick and let you know thanks for following along on today's cook. If you are new to the channel, go to that bottom right corner, subscribe, check out some of the other videos you've missed. If everybody has been following along, as always, you appreciate it. We continue our fight and we're going to keep this thing going. All right, we losing daylight. We about five hours in, as you can see on this uh, spring full AZ day. Still rolling along at about 250. I'm adding some wood in. About to rotate that old chicken over there. And uh, we're gonna also get some temps over here on this uh, beef rib. I'm gonna be throwing that point towards the back. It ain't seen that yet, so I'm about to check this thing out and see what we're looking at. Color-wise, I'm liking it. Uh, again, I'm gonna spritz this outside edge. As you can see, it's barking up real nice. Get in close on that, so I'm gonna spritz that area. This area is still self-basting, so I'm not gonna worry about that too much. And then uh, same thing on the outsides over there. So we're gonna try to get in between the bone. Ooh, that looks, that feels respectfully tender. But 175, so don't let it fool you. Cause it'll tighten back up. Let's try another area. Wow, it's getting there. I tell you what, 191 over there. It's getting there, that don't feel bad at all. Try right in the top. 175, 176. All right, we're working well. I was expecting this to be roughly about a six hours uh, cook, something like that. Like I said, this was 6.34. We did trim a little bit off, so at least six of them. We're going at about 250. Bonus cook, rotate my chicken, give it a little uh, spritz of some olive oil, let it keep on going. And then uh, we'll come back and check on this a little bit later. Let me spritz it down. All right, there we go on the flip, just so you can check out that other side. Good looking piece of meat, I tell you that. It had that beautiful marble in the front or in the beginning. Ain't too much you can do when it starts to draw up on you other than try to rotate it to maybe uh, make it cook a little bit more evenly, but that's going to happen. So I'm not too worried because I already going to know that that little part right there, that angle is going to be mine. And then we're going to make two big baby uh, uh, ribs to kind of play with later on. I like the idea. Put my chicken around. Still got to spritz that. We better put this in here for another hour or so. We'll come back and we'll check it out. All right, I'm bringing you in here six hours in. I'm looking at the bonus cook right over there. This baby is about done. That's been going just about two hours over there. Been holding steady at this temp roughly about 250, 260-ish, somewhere between there. Uh, this baby's still looking good. I haven't even get a chance to spritz that yet. I'm gonna hit these outsides again. I'm temping in between them bones at roughly about 190, 191. It's feeling pretty decent, but I want to keep on going. We're going to take this thing all the way up to about roughly 202, 203, something like that. And uh, we should be good. I'm going to leave it exactly how it is because it hasn't had that nose towards the back for a while. And I'm going to let it keep on going. All right, pulling you back in here. Here we are at 7 hours, 50 minutes. I'm starting to go in there like butter like I wanted it to be. I saw a spot up here that was a little bit closer. But then as I check in some of these other ones, I'm hitting the brown where I want to be. So these babies coming off. Beautiful looking bark all the way around. I can see that bone damn near pushed all the way out like I expected. But uh, I'll let you see what it looks like on the inside. Let's get it off. Let's get it a rest. Okay, we back in the house. You can see this thing glistening here. Hit it with a little bit of that uh, liquid gold that we had over here. I'm about to let this hang out in the microwave just for a minute and let it uh, kind of come back together. Grab my cutting board as you see and grab my knife and then we're going to chop into this thing. All right, I have waited long enough. So let me jump into this thing. I should just pull this bone out as I know it's not going to really want to stay much. I'm going to lightly try to give it a little something. Oh yeah, that's cutting like butter. So we can't keep it on the bone just a tad Woo. okay and then this one here this is still pretty warm at least I get my initial cuts done BAM I let these hang out mm. oh yes I am looking forward to tasting on this. Only one way in. At least it did all stay on. As you can see, nice and juicy. Great looking smoke ring on there. Dripping. Mmm. 
That is tasty. That is tasty. Mmm. Let me flip this around. So let's recap that thing. We got it done roughly about nine hours when it was all said and done. So some things to keep in mind, a couple of my quick little observations. We're going to get this thing up out of here. I'm going to smash my leather beef rib that I got chilling over here to the side. Uh, starting off with this brisket like rub that we used on here. Ain't no brisket like rub. This is a brisket rub that I used on here. Like I told you, um, I'll make sure I probably try to find that video and uh, add that one on there with, from the uh, mad scientist. Um, that was a good one. This is a good rub from nothing else. It was John Lewis. If it wasn't for Aaron Franklin, if it wasn't Aaron Franklin, at least we know it's somebody's. I've enjoyed this rub. I use this a lot of times on brisket. Eight parts of black pepper, three parts of Lawry's, three parts of a uh, kosher salt, and then one part of a uh, garlic powder. And I like granulated garlic. I told you that before. This works out pretty good. I liked it on that uh, beef rib. Nice little switch over. One thing that I wish was about to have more time, I would have normally, normally uh, season that up and let that sit a little bit longer, let that kind of you know saturate in there more to the bone. I feel like I could have went a little bit saltier, so definitely that could have been one that maybe I could have looked at uh, doing that salt brine on, like we've done a couple of those other videos. Um, but overall, flavor-wise, it's got a great taste. I'm actually just tasting a little bit that I nibbled over here a second ago before I started this video, and I can taste that fully in the back of my mouth right now. But overall, on these beef ribs, I love it. Came out great. Uh, big shout out over there to uh, Butcher Block Meats and my girl Allison that hooked me up with a nice set of uh, plate ribs. Uh, these babies were nice and marble. So this is one thing I'll tell you. I was running late on daylight, running late on time. I needed to give me some sleep. So I went ahead and I got them off a little earlier than I probably normally would have went. It was probably tempting at about 201 in most spots. I remember one spot even was almost at about 198-ish, which I wasn't too worried about because I know I got some carryover that was going to come in, as well as for me, those was going to be something I was going to actually eat on more or less the next day, so they was going to be getting reheated. So keep that in mind when you're cooking. Maybe you want to save yourself a little bit of room to play, so that way you don't dry your food all the way out. So leaving those couple degrees off, I like it about 205. The main thing is there is a lot of connective tissue in your beef rib. You got to get that nice and broke down. These was nice and tender at about 201, but there was still a little bit more fat that I like rendered completely out of there, and that'll also baste you and give you a little bit more flavor. As I warm them up, as you can see, I use a nice little single piece of uh, foil once I've already kind of wrapped them up, and then put them back in there, and if you need to, you can always glaze them with a little bit of that tallow that we made from the uh, fat. Then warm those babies up. Let me tell you, you'll notice the difference. These things was scrum diddly -umptious. This was another good cook. We still working out here. I still got me some ribs to go, but I do got to get up out of here. So I'm going to catch y'all next week. I appreciate y'all for kicking with me like normal. Shouts out to the family, my boys over there at Black Smoke Barbecue, and everybody else out there in TV land. One time. Peace.